Hey, hi everyone. So it's Saturday the 12th of June and I thought I'll give you all an update on the Sling TSI build. So we are at the stage of um, trimming the cowling uh, to match um, uh, to match the fuselage. So, so primarily focused on the bottom cowling because that needs to be in place to house all the radiators and things and um, and then the top cowling can be done. Um, so it was uh, pretty much the steps are quite detailed. The, um, described in the uh, in the manual build manual but there's a lot of trimming uh, especially around the the exhaust uh, and the the nose gear uh, the, the bottom cowling has to be trimmed quite a bit uh, to clear the nose gear and the the exhaust uh, and obviously you get the final spacing correct at the prop and then trim the rear end um, once the bottom cowling was pretty much done again it has to you know the installation line up with the air intake and the intercooler and things like that um, so that was all done and um, we're kind of at the stage where we can now start testing some of the systems um, I've hooked up all the Garmin units um, they, they all went on quite well uh, it wasn't uh, much of an issue everything connects up obviously this is pretty much a drop-in harness from Midwest uh, panel builders in the US uh, also mounted the the center console now that's permanently fixed it's been upholstered as well um, so my paint color scheme for the upholstery is like black mostly black with red stitching uh, there is a little bit of gray on the seats but uh, uh, yeah it's mostly that dark uh, darker color and um, yeah this this all went along quite fine uh, still need to tidy that up uh, that leather on the where the seat belts come out um, the fuel selector, the top part of it needs quite a bit of trimming to clear the, um, the cabin heat, uh, electric, the fan switch, and the other, uh, yeah, other switch. The cowling, uh, the cam locks are quite a bit of a pain. Um, they need a special sort of cam lock pliers to insert them. Um, fitting these um, radiators, they were pretty straightforward. Um, and then it was. Uh, uh, James did the rest of the work to connect up all the coolant lines and um, and all of that, the radiated radiators and the 3D printed part that will form the cover for the master contactor. Um, pretty much yeah, all the firewall wiring was completed and while we were testing the, the systems we had the battery uh, on a battery charger. Um, so we stuck with just a standard lead acid 12 volt battery. Um, easy use being, you know, if in this final place all connected up now. And so it was time to switch on the panel. And it was such an exciting moment. Um, um, we tried it on without the G3X um, and most all the systems worked and um, finally plugged that in as well uh, to check all the systems. Uh, it was me trying to play with the maps. So obviously it does get the location from the, the small uh, GPS antenna. So it knows where we are, uh, but obviously there's no aviation information uh, for the UK so that needs to be downloaded it really came with the US map and um, yeah it is recognizing the GEA 24 so the engine instruments and um, things like that are showing there uh, we've also had um, obviously the ECU is all connected up so lane A and lane B we tested them um, so switched on uh, so both lanes are on at this stage um, so turn them one of them off and that's the self-diagnostics check and the light goes off once everything's good um, James even plugged in the the diagnostics for the he's got a Rotax diagnostics plug and everything seems good so we're ready okay to start the engine that will be the next step and then ship it off to paint 